But it's time now for a look through today's newspapers, and for that I'm joined on set by Alison Sargent. Hello, Alison. Hi, Nadia. Um, you're going to be starting us off by having a look through how the newspapers have been reacting to Joe Biden's inauguration. That's right, Nadia, and we can start uh, with the European papers, which by and large are welcoming the US uh, back to its old self, the way that they see it. Uh, Left-wing Italian paper La Repubblica calls Biden's inauguration America's redemption, and they feature that nice fist bump photo of uh, Biden and Harris. Uh, another interesting headline comes from the Swiss German tabloid Blick. Uh, they say, make America normal again. Uh, over in the UK, meanwhile, the Financial Times headlines with Biden's quote, democracy has prevailed. Uh, this quote is a popular one for many of the European papers. Uh, we also see in that photo there uh, Biden's massive family Bible that he was sworn in on. Uh, over in the US, uh, there really is a feeling of renewal in many of the papers. USA Today headlines with a day of history and hope. And then unity is the path is the headline on the front page of the Washington Post today. The paper writes that Biden's term uh, begins with a plea for, uh, for a divided nation to end its, quote, uncivil war. Right, Alison. And unity, uh, clearly the key message to come out of that speech by Joe Biden yesterday. Um, how is that message being received in some of the more conservative papers? Well, it's getting sort of mixed reviews from the Wall Street Journal. Uh, in their editorial today, they say that all Americans, no matter their political leanings, um, can take pride in the inaugural proceedings. Uh, still, the paper does accuse Biden of being too simplistic in framing the, the current cultural climate as being a fight between American ideals on one side um, and then, you know, racists and nativists on the other side. They think that's too extreme. Uh, the paper really wants more reassurance from Biden that conservatives are not going to be purged by progressive censors, as they say, um, although they do say that for them, uh, Biden is refreshingly unwoke. All right, Alison. Um, and despite some of the uh, security s concerns ahead of inauguration, actually, we didn't see many protests across the US, did we? You know, the, d the day went uh, quite smoothly. State capitals had really been bracing for potential protests. Uh, in the end, uh, many saw just one or a handful of Trump supporters. Uh, on the website of the magazine Forbes, we actually see a photo of the one lone protester who came out to the New York state capitol yesterday. Now, this comes amid reports that some supporters of Donald Trump have been sort of turning on him. Uh, the Washington Post reports in particular on chaos in the QAnon community. These are people who believe uh, in a very wild conspiracy theory. The paper writes that some of their, uh, the supporters are rethinking their beliefs after things didn't go as planned for Donald Trump. Uh, others are sort of trying to find a way to, to reconcile things, to twist the theory, to make things line up. Uh, one analyst who spoke to the Washington Post, though, warns that QAnon is unlikely to go away entirely because they say uh, the movement has already become international and they say it notably has supporters in Germany and and in Japan. All right, Alison, let's get back, though, to the inauguration ceremony itself. Um, we have music from Lady Gaga from J-Lo, um, but it was a young poet la laureate who really stole the show. That's right, Nadia. This is Amanda Gorman. She's just 22 years old. Uh, her performance, I think, was what marked me the most, definitely, out of this um, inauguration. She's getting worldwide attention. French magazine Loops calls her a sensation. Uh, the paper notes that uh, Amanda Gorman, like Joe Biden, actually has struggled with a speech impediment. Amanda Gorman has struggled with her R's. Uh, Joe Biden is known to stutter. Now, the New York Times reports that Gorman was working on this poem sort of slowly, only if writing a couple days at a time, until the riot on Capitol Hill. Uh, that night, she stayed up all night and finished the poem. Uh, she told the New York Times that she feels that now, more than ever, the United States really needs an inaugural poem. Uh, she said, poetry is the touchstone that we go back to to remind ourselves of the history we stand on and the future that we stand for. Yeah, and it was a beautiful poem, wasn't it, Alice? Mm -hmm. Really quite extraordinary. Um, before we let you go, though, one aspect you haven't touched on yet, and that is uh, the fashion angle at the inauguration. That's right, the crucial fashion uh, angle. Uh, something people might say is superficial, but it actually has a lot of symbolism. And if you don't believe me, uh, maybe you can believe the Courrier International. Uh, they are looking into one of the day's main symbols. This was Kamala Harris and the former Democratic First Ladies all wearing different shades of purple. Uh, the Courrier International explains that purple is a bipartisan color because it is the combination of red and blue. Uh, it's also one of the international colors of suffragettes, and it was the color used on the campaign posters of Shirley Chisholm. She was the first black woman to run for president and the first black woman ever elected to Congress. Kamala Harris has been known to wear purple uh, as a, sort of a wink to her. Now, despite lovely shades of purple and Lady Gaga's a very giant dove <laughs> brute, um, it was 
Senator Bernie Sanders, who really stole the day uh, as the fashion icon of the inauguration. You can see his outfit here, characteristic gray puffer jacket and handmade mittens. There have actually been entire articles written about his mittens. Uh, it wasn't just the outfit, though. It was also the way that he was seated, which sort of gave the overall impression that he maybe had somewhere better that he could be. Uh, pop culture writer Ashley Smalls thought he looked like someone who thought this meeting, quote, could have been an email. Uh, tons of memes uh, have come out of this photo of people placing Bernie Sanders in other settings. Uh, CNN's Jake Tapper shared his favorite Bernie Sanders making an appearance at the Yalta conference at the end of World War II. Uh, he slid in there like on the side alongside Winston Churchill. Uh, there's one more I think we can show you. Uh, this one puts Bernie Sanders in this iconic photo of, uh, of U.S. construction workers. Uh, he's down there uh, on the far right at the end. I think, you know, in both of these cases, he, he kind of blends in, uh, so it's hard to spot him. I think for a lot of Americans, this is sort of a reminder of the president that might have been. All right, that's it uh, for the Press View. And if you'd like more um, from Alison and the team, you can find the rest of the Press Reviews on our website.